Hey everyone, welcome back to today's episode. I am really excited about this one. I get to talk to my dear friend and my dear mentor, <laughs> the, only, the one and only Tina Falk. And she's back for the third time in a row. This is a, the third time you've been on my podcast and I'm so honored to always have you in my presence and hear what you have to say about this year. I. I'm feeling like it's electric. I'm excited to hear. Um, <laughs> That's a good hear, word for it. Yeah, electric and um, sizzle, maybe. That's another word that's kind yeah. of me. Wow is another word. I could keep mm -hmm. But Well, thank you to the one and only Jen Suliafu for, <laughs> for inviting me back. We just have such good conversations, don't we? Yeah. I'm going to go off and... I know. do the stuff that some people you know i just in fact i had a, a client reach out to me and you know, she, she's not here in utah but she said god i just i try to talk to my husband about this stuff i just don't have anybody that i can have these kind of conversations with and i just love when i can meet with somebody that you know i can talk woo woo stuff with deep soulful like you know no hold back kind kind of combos <laughs> i know uh when you said that about this gal or this client of yours, I thought, well, that's what exactly what you were for me when mm -hmm. I found you is, you know, I now can talk to my husband about things ish, right? I can't mm -hmm. go too, too weird, <laughs> too <laughs> woo -woo. or then he goes, okay, honey, that's a little out there. But, um, but I found you and I just, oh, I felt that with you where I could just, say what was on my mind and my heart and you could expand my awareness in such a way where I'm like oh my gosh I've never thought about that before but things just lit up inside me as you would tell me these things or you know say you know well this imagine it this way and and so I felt the same way so I love our our convos but Let's get into this year. Um, I know last year this makes me laugh because I'm like that curious monkey. I do have a monkey in my chart. And I, so for those of you who don't know, Tina is my feng shui master, my teacher, my guide, who we've been on a journey together for many years. I found her, um, geez, it's probably been, well, I virtually found her 12 years ago so it's been a full cycle um but then in 2013 i reached out to her or 2014 something like that but anyways um we've been on a journey together and i found her i found you in such a time of need for myself i was so hungry and searching for just that depth that those answers to important questions and you divinely came into my path and we've stayed in contact all these years and every year um we're always looking at the energy i'm always wanting to look at you know many different layers as as are you she tina really goes into her specialty is her expertise is really giving us the ins and outs of the chinese astrology and last year, I was like, well, what about next year, Tina? Tell me about <laughs> the year of the dragon. And because I have that curious monkey, you go, <laughs> calm down, Jen. <laughs> Not so fast, babe. You got to wait till next year. And I was like, geez, can't you give me at least a teaser? And um, now we're, here we are. So, you know, yeah. I'm excited for this one. Well, here and here's part of the reason I do that, um, aside from like just because you weren't the only one. People get curious and it's like, okay, I'm done with this year already. And but it's September. The Chinese New Year doesn't begin until February 4th. So we're still in rabbit energy right now. And so there's a little bit of me that's like, let's stay present. Let's not skip any gifts that this energy that's present is meant to give us. Because if we're already leaping forward into another year, but the real reason is I, this coming, this coming year with the dragon energy on February 4th, I was a little nervous about it actually. Mm. And I thought, I don't even want to go there right now. I don't have the capacity to start testing the waters and start tapping in 
in getting downloads of what this dragon energy means. But when, it, when I'm ready, the dragon will present itself. And all of a sudden, gosh, I don't think it started happening until, of course I had to prepare and everything, but I don't think I really started getting clarity around the beginning of December about what this dragon was. And that's when people like you, who know their Chinese astrology, especially, I had like the first 11 update readings I did for the year all had dragon in their chart. I'm like, of course, because that's what teaches me. Every time I can open up a chart, then it's like, oh, I see these images or I hear these messages of what the dragon means. So it was you all teaching me. It was your dragons that was teaching me what this energy was going to be about. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps coming. And the reason I think I was nervous is because it's intense. And who would have thought the rabbit year was going to be the way it was? You know, you think oh. of a sweet little bunny, oh, yeah. you know, ch chomping on some grass and he, he's a scaredy cat. He's going to run away when things happen. But it, yeah, it was a it was a lot. So I was a little bit nervous about knowing this energy that's coming because it's a lot more than a rabbit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, because I was I was like, oh, good. The year of the rabbit. It's the most compassionate animal on the wheel. You guys, we got it. We got a nice little breather here. <laughs> that's how I felt about the year of the rabbit. And it was it was deep it was intense uh, i did see a lot of the rabbit energy though like it's so fun to see how it shows up and how it shows up differently for people for me mm -hmm. oh, it was such a a hard year but also very beautiful so mm -hmm. beautiful um but it was the rabbit is you know so symbolic of the of the family right Mm -hmm. And for me, it was such a big year for my family and us really coming together and bonding and saying goodbye to my father, our father. And um, it was a really big year of healing for me personally. Mm -hmm. so. Well, the rabbit in the on the feng shui compass, the rabbit, and I think this is good that we're starting out. I like to reflect on where we've been before we stop, talk about where we're going. The rabbit sits in the east of the feng shui compass and that governs ancestry. It's family, like you said, it's past, present and future. So that's the energy that it brings. The emotions are, are anger versus serenity. You know, those are pretty big extremes that we were experiencing. And so that ancestral energy, plus the other thing is rabbit lives in the dark. It dwells in the ground, it, it's comfortable there. So we had to be comfortable going to those places that maybe we've been, you know, oh, I didn't notice that rabbit hole. You know, I didn't notice that those things were there and people are afraid to go there. And we were forced to, because we got a lot of work to do and we need to start dropping some crap that we've been dragging along for not just our lifetime, but for generations. And I, I'm with you, it was an incredibly hard year but there were so many gifts that that kind of, you know, umbrellaed everything, mm -hmm. you know, and like the rabbit, you know, I, it was a big year for my family, you know, there was a big scare with my husband and then we had a grandbaby, like, wow, that's a huge shift, right? Yeah. So it's like letting things go or seeing things where they could be and then see the blessings. Yeah. Wow. Crazy and awesome, but even the even isn't it isn't that just the truth of life though is you have these hard moments and then later you can see that joy and that what mm -hmm. that brought to you because I'm sure going through that with your husband that uh, it just brought you guys to a space of just really appreciating appreciating each other. It's one of those hands that reaches in and shakes you to go, hey, what matters to you? Yeah. So, yeah. It brought the, even, you know, my kids are adults like yours. It brought us together as a family. And I had to step back and take a picture of my two kids sitting around a card table with my husband doing a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Like we hadn't done that since they were little. I don't know if we've all done that together, but it was, it was required of us, mm -hmm. you know, and the funny thing is, so my husband's a double dragon and he got, he went into emergency surgery in April, which is a dragon month. 
And the puzzle we were working on was a puzzle that a friend of ours out east sent us and it was a dragon puzzle. And so it was that, it was kind of that energy that, you know, that brought us together, like you said. Wow, he's a double dragon, huh? Mm -hmm. Wowza. <laughs> Wowza for me. <laughs> he seems really chill to me. He seems this really chill. Awesome. Like, like I have a... Uh... I have Mia, my youngest, who is, she's got a dragon in her emotion pillar. Don't you too? My dragon's in my mind pillar. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. her, she, she has a dragon in her emotion pillar and boy, you better run. <laughs> she gets upset. <laughs> my granddaughter does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she does? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. And so just for clarity, as we're talking here in your Chinese astrology chart, you actually have four animals. So it's not just the year of, you were born the year of the dragon, me, I'm born the year of the horse. It's not just that. It's just like, it's the same as saying I'm Aries. I'm more than that, right? So it's, it's the Chinese astrology is such a beautiful tool. To me, I become the chart. It's an extension of me. It's my portal to connect and, and understand and be able to interpret and tell a story. Um, but you have that, and then you also have the five Chinese elements in varying levels. And so that's what the astrology chart reveals is who you are. And people really seem to connect with the charts, don't they? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. it. It tells you so much about yourself and about your spouse and about your kids. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so interesting. I love it. Okay, so last year was the year of the rabbit. We were saying goodbye. You you mentioned that the new year starts on February 4th. I thought it started on the 10th. Is that Okay, not that's a great question. So they have two new years. Oh. The solar new year, like how we track the astrology charts, like we do in Western astrology too, it's our sun sign. We track the solar year. So your chart is based off of the solar year. The Chinese spring festival, the lunar new year is the 10th. Okay. That's what the beginning of spring and that's the celebration. Sometimes it's in January, sometimes it's in February. Those dates vary depending on the, the, the cycles. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when, when dealing with like getting from the thought process of getting your, your space prepped and ready, cause I always like to be ready for the new year. Um, do you go off of February 4th or February 10th as far as feng shui in your home? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I personally use the fourth. Okay. I use that energy and I don't know if I'm just more drawn to the sun energy because like I'm a fire horse. Um, I think, I, I mean, there's some things that I'll consider that are more celebratory, but it, when it's doing my house, you know, like the night before I take out all the garbage. So the next morning the garbage is gone, recycling's gone, nothing's inside the house. I'll sweep. You know, we might go do some sort of ceremony outside, but it's, you know, like you were doing the other day. It's like throw out the, the expired stuff under the cabinets and in the pantry. I'll do that kind of stuff to just clear space for. Um, and then maybe do more of the celebratory festival kind of stuff for the 10th. Yeah. I love the Chinese New Year because I, I don't start thinking about the New Year until like the last week of january you've got all the holidays and all of that mm -hmm. and then i go oh shoot i gotta get ready and i like to <laughs> i like to feng shui before the january 1st i like mm -hmm. to you know do do a little ditty there and spruce up a little bit and start then but then i love that you have that buffer you know what i mean because it's a mm -hmm. lot of work to to declutter i mean depending on how your space is i mean your space you probably don't have to do much because your space is amazing. Well, if it was just my space, that would be true. <laughs> that, that's true. When you've got, you know, a house full of love. That's that's what you call the chaos that comes with family. Oh, that's a good one. I'll have to remind myself. <laughs> I, always say to, I always say to my husband, I go, honey, you know, one day we're our house is going to look perfect and we're going to probably be bored. So let's just embrace these moments. But, um, but yeah, so, okay, so what what can we expect this year let's talk about the dragon bring us into this uh this year well let me explain the energy and then that might because like you were saying before every, you know like the rabbit hit people differently 
depending on the animals and the elements in your chart, the dragon's going to influence each of us differently. It's going to influence us as a whole, <clears throat> globally, human, the humanity. Um, but it's going to influence each of us individually because some animals don't get along with the dragon. They clash or there's, um, there's damage or self-penalty energy. So there's different kinds of energy. And there's some animals that, yay, the dragon is here. This is awesome. I'm, I'm going to make some money, that kind of stuff. And then there's some animals that are neutral. And for the most part, you know, when I'm doing charts, um, you know, I do like 30 to 60 charts at the beginning of every year. Wow. People want chart readings, update readings. And for the most part, it's a mixed bag. You know, maybe their animals don't get along, but it really, the energy really balances out their element wheel. And so there's that kind of thing. So the energy of this next year, it's called a young wood dragon. So a lot of people are born during dragon years, but not everybody, like what year were you? You weren't born a young wood dragon. I was. I wasn't um, young wood, but I was born a fire dragon year. Okay, so a young fire dragon. Young fire dragon. So my husband's a young wood dragon. That young wood dragon, it takes sixty years to come around. My husband's going to be sixty this year. That's a sixty year. It's a complete cycle. Mm -hmm. So in Chinese astrology, that's the birthday we celebrate. It's very auspicious because you've because you've lived all the potential. So one way we can look at this is we can go back 60 years and look at history. You can Google it now, right? You can see it's, it talks about nuclear, it talks about technology, it talks about that kind of stuff. So we can look at past energy and say, okay, well, some of it might come back around, but a lot of the, the world is more awake now. We've shifted things. We are expanding and we're growing, some of us, um, and some of us not as, as you know, whatever, but it's yang wood dragon. A yang fire dragon is different than a yang wood dragon, right? Your dragon breathes fire. A yang wood dragon flies. Mm. Yang wood is the forest. It's a busy energy. It's very active. It's got really deep roots and really strong, sturdy trunks, and then it bears fruit and shade and cover for, for protection. But it's a very active energy. It's very busy. The tops of the trees are always rustling. They're always moving about. So it's a very active energy, and it's, it can cause distractions, um, not getting things done. It can also cause overreaction because it's so active. In the I Ching, Yang Wood is known as thunder. So I'm calling this the thunder dragon mm. because, <laughs> because of some of the visions that I've seen. When we hear thunder, what do we do? Oh, oh crap, is it supposed to rain? Is there a storm coming? Do I need to bring the lawn furniture in? Do I need to take cover? Mm -hmm. That's how this feels to me with Yang Wood. Listen, how far away is it? Remember when we were kids, you could count, you hear thunder, and then you count before you see the flash, and then you could tell how close in miles the, the storm was to you. The storm is brewing. Sometimes it's our own storm. Sometimes it's other, it could be something happening in your neighborhood, in your community, in the world, and one of the things when it's that lofty of energy is we have to stay grounded. We have to find our center because we can't be tossed into these storms. We need to be those anchors for people who are going through storms. And some storms we create, you know, because we're just, we're idiots or we're, we're, we weren't thinking or we're goofy or we don't know better. But it's really important this next year to stay grounded so that we don't get sucked into these other things that are happening in the world. The whole, we can't all be experiencing chaos at the same time. Yeah. Can right? you if, give people some sort of an idea on what you mean by that? Like how, how, what are some ideas to stay grounded? Yeah. Um, I tap into your five senses. That's the easiest way. We're sensorial beings. These are our, our, 
triggers, our, our physical triggers and reminders of who we are and why we're here. So smell, um, things that are really earthy, the dirt, cinnamon, look for aromatherapy blends that are very grounding. Um, smell, taste would be things that are grounding. Um, typically it's root vegetables, it would be cinnamon tea, um, it could be chocolate. Chocolate's very, very grounding. I'm giving you permission to eat chocolate this yeah, year. <laughs> you're like, sorry, honey. <laughs> Tina says I have to eat all this chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Think about things that make you feel heavy when you eat it. Oatmeal, mm. a big heavy meal, potatoes, steak, those kinds of things. Um, hearing, drumming is very earthy. It's the mother's heartbeat. It's the earth. It's very native. So drumming, you can, whether it's on Spotify or if you have a drum, just very methodical drumming. Um, what site eyes would be, you know, specific colors like earthy colors or hiking through the mountains, you know, working in your garden. Touch would be like stones, some cool rocks that you pick up on a hike. They don't need to be fancy crystals that you buy in a store. They could just be an agate or something. If your kids bring home rocks, that, that kind of thing. But then grounding behavior, things that tell you to slow down, pause, be still, rest, because it is a lot of energy that's coming. So wherever you can retreat and know that when, man, we just live in a culture where downtime is not seen as, well, you're not being productive. You're not getting anything done. You're not grinding hard enough. That is extremely productive to sleep, to nap, to rest. Because we do so much work internally that we're not even aware of. Mm -hmm. And our bodies need a chance to be able to catch up to that, the work that we're doing. You know, walking barefoot in the grass. I finally, the other night, I just haven't been sleeping well. And I put my grounding mats under my mat, under my sheets. Oh, I've been sleeping so good ever since. Really? Mm-hmm. There's a wonderful um, movie. It's a full feature documentary style movie on YouTube. It's free to watch. It's called The Earthing Movie. Very profound, very incredible. And it wouldn't surprise me if more of those kinds of conversations or teachings don't start popping up. Yeah. So did you just, do you just have like the smaller grounding mat that you put in your, under your mattress? It's probably two and a half, three feet long okay. and probably a foot deep. Okay. And I put, you know, one around where my lower back is and one up around my neck and shoulders. Nice. And then you've been sleeping. Oh my gosh. Since then. Mm -hmm. You have it plugged in then? Mm hmm Okay, nice. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I do. I, it, that was such a good thing. So that's Yongwood energy. It's just big, it's active energy. And that's a carryover from the rabbit energy because that's the same sector that the rabbit lives in. It's that very ancestral, right? Deep roots, strong trunk. And here's the thing with Yongwood energy is it's the only element that creates itself. It's dependent on, on a friend nearby. It wants more of itself. And when, the, when there's toxins in the air or when there's toxins in the ground, right? The tree gets sick. It's not just the tree that gets sick. It spreads throughout the forest. We are the forest. When one of us isn't doing well, when none of us are doing well. Wow. Because we're co-creating. We're all in this together. When somebody's hurting on the other side of the planet, we feel it. We get angry. We're triggered. We want to do something about it. We want to turn the TV off because we can't take it. It's because we're one. We share that we are a community and that's what wood energy is, is community and family. We need to take care of our community and family. We need to tend to our garden, to our forest and make sure that we're feeding it healthy source, healthy insights, healthy words, healthy beliefs, healthy thoughts, healthy activities and habits. We have a long way to go. But we can't be deterred by it, but we have a long way to go. 
do you feel like you have seen a change in that? Like when you look back, you know, I think about like the Israel, everything going on in Israel. And I have been taken aback and struck with as terrible as everything is. I've never seen in my life or noticed people that are in their 20s, in their 30s, even 40s, that just around me that care so much about what's happening on the other side of the world. Do you and that's like part of change in that. Absolutely. And that's part of that forest. When you look in the root system, it's a matrix. It's a network of roots. What is social media? It's a network. That's what keeps the big family together. Yes, we can. We we know it's controversial, and we can get into the shadow side of social media or the internet, the World Wide Web network. But the plus size side is, it does connect us. May not maybe not as deeply in some areas, but it does connect us, and it's easier to help. It's easier to send money or to protest or write a letter or do whatever. And so absolutely, yeah. um, I think that's a great thing. Yeah, me too. So the dragon energy, the dragon is nothing, it's nothing that we're familiar with. We don't have dragons on this planet anymore, right? We don't go to the zoo. We can't watch Nat Geo and see what, how dragons behave and what they're doing. And, oh, can I get one as a pet? We, we can't. So it's, it's an energy that's a bit foreign to us. It's unknown. It's unpredictable. It's like, oh, and it feels to me, honestly, that some people are not going to do well because, because of their own fears. You know, I don't know what I would, if I stepped outside and I saw a dragon flying over, I don't, you know, I think I would hope that I would go, oh my God, finally you're here. <laughs> please, please come to my house where other people might run inside and grab guns and start firing at this dragon. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's here to hurt us. Because that's how Hollywood and a lot of these, these stories portray dragons as being mean and they're destructive and they have an agenda and they're fighters. Not in Chinese folklore. They're a very benevolent creature. They were created by children to protect their villages. So it's going to be, it's going to be dependent on your perspective and your willingness to have an open heart and an open mind to receive the dragon. Are you going to lock yourself inside or are you going to build a fire and invite the dragon to sit with you? Because what the dragon is bringing isn't from earth. It's from other realms. He's the bridge between heaven and earth. He has wisdom and knowledge and messages from beyond. He's here to shake things up, build, break down the, the box or the, the buildings and the structures. He's the ultimate rebel. He's going, and that's, that's why you do what you do so well, is because you question, you push back. Just because you say you are, that you do this, or this is your credentials, why should I believe you? That's dragon energy. The rules, the rules don't apply to dragon because they look at the humans and say, oh, you muggles, <laughs> why, are you, why are you getting so caught up in this stuff? We need dragon. We need dragon people like you on this earth. We need dragon energy here because it, it, it gives us an opportunity to be open to magic, to be open to any possibility, to change, to really inviting us to be the rebel, inviting us to um, explore or, or do things differently. They really are a very unique, eccentric creature and it he's it's perfect timing yeah as you're mentioning all these things i'm thinking about oh, just so many things i'm thinking about the election and 
and just all so many different systems that are on the forefront of people looking at right now, you know, medical system, school system. And I just am so, it's almost like a kid on Christmas morning where I'm like, <laughs> what's going to happen with all of this? And I feel like what you said is just so key is the fear. I think it's so important for us to step out of the fear, like as, as much as we can, you know, it's okay to have an anxious moment or, you know, to recognize that you're feeling a little fear and address that and nurture yourself in whatever way. I'm not saying I am totally without fear in my life because there are many times when I feel that and I have to nurture myself, but but to step back and look at, like just to be an observer this year with positive expectation and not not get into the fear and the drama, but to uh, see what's gonna happen. I, I feel like it's kind of like a fireworks show. Like, mm. what are the fireworks gonna be? Because it feels exciting to me um, the, the thought of change is very exciting to me. And don't you see that you hear, one thing that I think is so fun is when you hear other people talk, whether they're looking at Chinese astrology or Western astrology or numerology or talking about Aquarian, um, the Piscean shift with the Aquarian energy coming in, coming in it all lines up mm -hmm. to this moment and they all really coincide and it's like a synchronistic dance and and they um they, they all pretty much say the same thing about this time and it's it, actually remarkable yeah. because these systems are ancient and they didn't have the internet to share resources and well, what do you think is going to happen and what happens i mean these are people sitting on the riverbank meditating or sitting in front of fires or dreaming, creating these systems, you know, like all of those modalities that you mentioned. And it's absolutely divine that they all line up, you know, with some variations, of course. It's a lot of energy. And you touched on the emotions a bit. And so I just want to reiterate. So there's always a high and a low frequency to everything. Even if you're the happiest, have the happiest day, there's a low vibration there somewhere. There might be some part of you that's like, oh my God, the other shoe could drop. Maybe I don't deserve a day like this, but I'm going to celebrate anyway, right? There's always a high and a low to everything. So I mentioned earlier that this Yangwood energy, the emotion, the, the yin emotion is anger, right? That's, that's a good emotion to have. Love anger. It's an impetus. It drives us to do something. It creates change. It's like it motivates us. We don't want to live there. We can't live there. We see people that live there and they're not doing well. You, it's a momentary thing. It's meant to get you going to do, make a change in your life or a change that needs to be done. The opposing um, energy of that, the yang energy of that is, like I said, serenity, right? Doesn't it feel kind of peaceful walking through the forest and it's just quiet? And you can almost feel the, the forest breathing with you, right? You want to sit, you want to hug, you want to just be there forever. The dragon also carries his, his emotions with him. He's a young earth creature. He brings, even though he is a young earth creature, he lives in the Southeast, which is a, a yin wood energy. It's where the money corner is. That's cool. The dragon lives in the money corner, right? The lucky dragon. The, the, um, the emotions that he carries is criticism versus compassion. Wow. That's key words mm -hmm. for our time. We are very critical. Yeah. We're wanting to police everybody. We're wanting to cancel everybody. We are critical people. We don't show compassion. We don't share compassion, not even for ourselves most of the time. This is... This energy is coming because this is where we need the work. This is what we need wow. to do. When you say that, I think about um, couples 
Like when you said that, you know, that was when the biggest shift in my marriage occurred. When I went from a space of criticism with my husband to compassion and mm -hmm. seeing that little boy within him that is like, oh my gosh, he's scared right now. He's afraid or he's stressed or seeing past whatever was going on with him. Mm -hmm. And it completely changed everything in our marriage. But I love that you saying that going from criticism to compassion mm -hmm. and seeing past that um, not only in your own house, but on an even grander scale, you know, with mm -hmm. people in life. It's not easy though, is it? It can be, it can be tricky. It like, is when they're close to you, isn't it? If someone's mean and nasty mm -hmm. and like, you want to just go, well, they're a jerk, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a radical shift there. Yeah, I mean, can you, if, if you're one that watched, I watch the news because I, I'm, I'm curious about the trends. I need to know what my clients, when they call and they're struggling, why they're struggling, right? Um, I am really good at watching the news and I can, ha I can have compassion for anyone. You know, the murderer, the one that's blowing up people on the other side of the, the world, because I, this is a unique perspective maybe that I have. We all came here with a purpose. We're all spiritual warriors at some level. And to me, I'm glad I didn't pick the part that is like somebody that's hated so much, that is, does have to murder, that does have to kill people or annihilate things. I'm glad that I didn't have to pick that role. So I have compassion for that soul that played that part right now in the bigger picture of things. I know it hurts. I know it's sad. It's, it's horrible what, what's happening in these different parts of the world, even in our own country, you know, in, in neighborhoods, shootings or whatever. I believe that we all played a part in it. Whoever is participating in that, in that moment, they were all in alignment. That's what was supposed to happen. I, did, I believe in that. Perhaps there's some, some mistakes that happened to walk by at that moment and weren't meant to be in the, the crosshairs. And then me witnessing it, I'm part of that too. That's how I see this. And I, it's easier for me to have compassion and give gratitude and thanks for playing that role. Thank you for being, being you. I don't know. Wow, maybe wow, I'm wow. just, why? Well, maybe I'm, you know, got my head in the clouds, but I think that's the gift of the dragon though. And I, I think maybe because he sits in my mind pillar, maybe that's how I can see. The dragon is the only animal on the Chinese zodiac wheel that can fly. So he has the ability to swoop up and see that there's a bigger picture. Humans get locked into these little things, this little moment, this little, mo I mean, I just saw in the news before coming on locally, there's a press conference because Utah has a serious road rage issue. Really? Oh my goodness. There's weapons, there's guns, there's shootings, there's car crashes. And they literally said, you don't have to die, but you could die in a road rage incident. Wow. And they consider weaving through traffic road rage. Mm -hmm. That's an issue, right? We don't have to, we don't have to be like this. We, we, we need to chill out. And that's the other gift that the, the dragon has to bring is he's very detached from the human ways. He's not buying it. It's like you guys had to make up these rules because you couldn't behave yourselves. That's why we have rules and regulations is because somebody did something really lame. Oh, I guess we better make a rule about that. The dragon says, we don't have to live like this. Now, somebody could take that energy and misuse it, right? Oh, rules don't apply to me. We know people on TV, they're doing that right now. I'm immune. Yeah. It doesn't apply to me. I can do whatever I want. It'll be really interesting to see what gifts the dragon, to me, he's dropping one gift. 
he's sharing one thing. If you look at old images of dragon energy, they're usually holding a ball, like a crystal ball. What is he holding? How, whatever we perceive that gift to be, that's what we get. So it's different for everyone. Everybody's going to receive it differently. The one thing. Yeah. Does everyone see what I mean by Tina, by listening to her and her just giving you a totally different perspective? I totally believe that every, like, I believe those things that you say. And it lights me up to hear that. I believe everybody comes and plays a role. But what a radically different viewpoint than um, what I was raised with or what I thought, you know, for many, many years of the good guy, bad guy type mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, and also what's interesting is, yes, I'm so grateful that we never, or that I didn't come to play the part of bombing people, but possibly in a past life, possibly mm -hmm. I've played that role before. So we so many times like to get on our high horse and go, well, I'm not that I'm a good person. Right. But when you can see that, I like to look at life like a, like a, um, maybe a big production, like a play we're, we're mm -hmm. playing or a movie that we're in. And, you know, there's, there's fantastic actors that play the villain, but they're still handsome or beautiful and you don't hate them or despise them because you realize they're just <laughs> art yeah. and, uh, and they did a great job. They did a phenomenal job, but that, we each are playing that role for the greater good of all mm -hmm. for us to like your husband's health scare. You know, I want to call him his name, Doug's Doug. health scare <laughs> but for other people that don't under, don't know. Um, but, but for his health scare, it's like that was, was something that sh it wasn't a positive thing, but it shook you to, to mm -hmm. see the opposite of like, Oh my gosh, I love him so much. I'm so grateful for those things that he contributes to our life and for his light, you know, but mm -hmm. um, that's the contrast. It's just like with there being a terrible incident in life that makes you go, what good can come out of any of this? But then mm -hmm. later you recognize, you know, I look at um, one of the most painful times in my life was going through a divorce. And from that experience, it made me appreciate my current husband so much more and my current marriage so much more. And so that contrast really does have to happen to give us um, that perspective. But it's interesting to me because it makes me wonder because we talk about um, going into this, this new shift, this new earth, this um, heightened level of consciousness. So what do you think with the being on a planet of duality of contrast? What is, what does that look like to be in that new earth? Are we still going to have that contrast? What's it going to be like? Do you have a thought process on that? Um, I do. I, you know, this, this planet is ruled by polarity. You know, it has a North and a South pole. It's a magnetic energy and magnetic energy has opposites. And so I think that will always be um, a part of existence here on this earth. Um, who knows, those polarities might um, weaken, perhaps. Maybe that's what waking up does, is it weakens the, the pull, you know? It's the, um, and, and things might shift that way um, so that the contrast doesn't seem so extreme, doesn't you know have to be like, like it is. Um, you know, the, the year of the dragon is significant. If, so it happens every 12 years, right? That's how the Chinese animals happen. So it's some sort of a dragon, yang fire, yang metal, whatever dragon. We can, we look back as an astrologist, you want to look for patterns and trends. The, the last dragon was 2012. That was the end of Mayan calendar of those of those those scripts those those tablets that were created the one before that was 2000 that was armageddon we weren't going to make it mm -hmm. what do i don't know what are the clocks going to do we you know people were freaking out 
you know, stockpiling food and all of that stuff. The one before that was 1988. There was a harmonic convergence. These are pivotal moments when the dragon decides to come to Earth and present and, and change things up. This is a change because Yang wood over Yang Earth is significant Earth changing energy. I do believe the new Earth or this new world that we're here to be a part of creating. I, I honestly believe it will exist. I would love to say I'll live long enough to be here to witness it. If I'm not, I'll be coming back immediately. <laughs> Maybe as my granddaughter's granddaughter, you know, to to because she's got a beautiful chart. I would love to be in to stay in her lineage if I could. Um, there's, you know, from what I'm getting from Jeremy, a cohort of mine who is also Western astrology, and it kind of lines up with the Eastern probably not till 2017 that we're going to start seeing a real like opening. I think we're going to see more division, more contrast. 2070? 17. 2017. Yeah. Wait. Not that the new earth is going to be here, Wait, but all of this intensity. I'm having a like really weird 2017. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Did I say 2017? Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. Am I? having a stroke right now That's so what funny. Is going on <laughs> i said that the other day i know i said that the other day and somebody didn't say what are you talking about 2027 sorry they just let you say it they didn't correct you yeah <laughs> they probably weren't even listening to me <laughs> <laughs> oh 2027 2027 okay that's doable we'll it's, still be here then <laughs> yeah it's something to look forward to you know okay. where things are going to get out of such intensity and start lightening up a little bit okay but i don't i mean you know what's interesting know? that lines up okay that lines up with uh what i just recent i had an interview with uh felicia bender who's a numerologist who mm. i have on yearly and she said that 2024 we're starting a three-year transition mm. cycle so it also lines up with the numerology she says over these three years it's going to be so so intense really you know mm -hmm. and then that next year would be 2027 which would be when we are coming out of that three-year transition cycle so yeah. that lines up there too so pretty interesting yeah, because the drag it's the dragon year this year, then it's the snake, that's a fire energy, and it's a horse, that's also a fire independent energy. The 2027 is a sheep year. It's more of collective, it's more compassion. Okay. Wow. Who knows who will survive this, this next few years? You know, it's crazy. I just got a message just this year. What day is it? What, the 10th of January? three people that I know have passed away. Wow. The dragon is also known as the scapist. Hmm. Like, I don't want to deal with this stuff. I don't want to deal with it. And so they, they, you know, they leave or they find drugs or they go off on some spiritual tangent and they're unrelatable anymore. It'll be just really interesting. And I think if we can hold a space of compassion you know, just vibrate compassion so that whatever enters your field is just getting touched by your compassion. You don't have to make any effort to it and go, oh, okay, well, thanks for cutting me off. Just send compassion. Maybe sit in a meditation for three minutes. Three minutes is a specific number. For three minutes and visualize what compassion is or how it feels in your body. Maybe it's a color, maybe it's a symbol that you can just emanate or remind yourself whenever you need to, to just picture that color or look for a symbol, you'd be surprised. If there's a symbol or a word or a color that comes up or a feeling, whenever you need it, your higher self will present it to you. It could be a song on the radio, it could be a sign on the bill, a billboard on the freeway. You'll be reminded that, oh yeah, I, I, need, to, I need to chill out. I need to take a breath. But feel what compassion is. It, it doesn't have to be. That's what the new world part of the new world is to me, is it's not this long linear process to achieve what you have to achieve. It's vertical. It's direct. 
ask and you shall receive. Oh my gosh, yes. That's what it is. It's not like, okay, well, I'll put it out there. We'll see what happens. Yeah. It's like, no, you're, the veil is thinner. You're more connected to God energy, your higher self, your most expanded self, your inner self, whatever you want to call it. Just get it. Access it. You're really making me think about these conversations that I keep having with my youngest daughter, Mia. Um, she is 12 years old and the school, uh, I, it is just miserable, <laughs> the school uh, journey, because she's looking at this stuff and going, well, she, mind you, she also has a dragon in her chart. And so when you said that they're like, why do I have to do this? You know what I mean? <laughs> she's looking at this and she's going, I don't want to do this. Like this doesn't make any sense to me. Like having to do this, like waste of time schoolwork. And when you say, you know, it's just like, it's not linear. It's just like here, you can have the answer. And I'm seeing her, she, she can find answers. She's a very sharp girl. But mm -hmm. she doesn't want to do it the way it's always been done. Mm -hmm. She wants to find yeah. an answer quickly, like you and I would want to do. We don't want to look on, you know, in a in an old dusty textbook trying to find it um, through going through thirty pages. We want to get on the internet or speak to Siri and speak into the ethers and say, hey. What is, you know, what's the best place to go for dinner? You know, we want to find the answer fast, just like they do. And she's really struggling with that. But that's what that makes me think of is just that direct, like, quick. Mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's like the technology we were talking about. Like, why are they, why learn math if you can go to Alexa and say, what's the, what's the solution to the equation, blah, blah, blah. They're going to give you the answer. You don't have to go through the junk drawer trying to find that calculator that can do that. It's that's what we're we're meant to be, right? We're meant to access, and that's why kids these days are so impatient, is because the world is not functioning that way for them. Their parents aren't functioning. Their teachers, their mentors aren't teaching them how to access, have immediate access to the information that you want. Is they're, own, quicker, I, they're quicker than the people teaching them. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that what's happening is it's like mm -hmm. it's kind of backwards like and they're very conscious you know yeah. they're flooding these like major conscious beings are flooding into the planet and they're being sent to learn from people that are less less conscious than them and it seems like there's something wrong and it may not be that the people are less conscious than them conscious than them it's the people are teaching them things in an old way, an outdated old perspective that doesn't serve. See, Tina no. always says a more compassionate way than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I literally did. I literally did a podcast that said your um your kids teacher or your kids are more conscious than their teacher. <laughs> You know, it can be, and it, like, I have gone in and talked to teachers, and not all teachers, of course, there's some right. fabulous, amazing, wonderful teachers out there, but um, I've gone, and I'm like, um, hello, like, is anybody in there? But that's, that's you, you're so sweet. And well, they've been bamboozled by the system, it's the system that's unconscious, right, it's that, and that's what we need to break through, so that we can have a say, you know, it's just, yeah, I mean, you and I, we've been on these we'll go off on the school systems for hours, you know, over the years, just, you know, cause I've been in it. I've been in the private sector, the charter sector, the public school sector, I've been in those. And so I, I get it. Um, I remember you saying that when we were studying, when I was studying with you and you telling me about the school system and your struggle that you were having with your children. And, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really, get the the magnitude of it until my younger kids were older oh yeah um, mm -hmm. but we've done the same like the public the private the charter and it's like man this one's to this and this one's to that and 
And it is now definitely a very front and center theme for us in our house, like daily, like we're trying, my husband and I are just trying to figure out what the best option is. We, we have yet to find it. I don't know. Why don't you I'm so a, grateful we're not there school, anymore. <laughs> you start a school and, and Mia and Drew can be your first student. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I've thought about it over the years, but I don't, I, that's not my thing. Um, I, you know, because there's, there still seems to be that here's what's expected. There's still so many expectations around what the school systems are supposed to teach and what your kids should be learning. And, and I love the concept of unschooling or, you know, just having your child play to outdoors until they're eight or nine years old. You know, take them on field trips, let them see the world and experience life that way rather than this structured way. Yeah, this ball of energy and light, sit down, shut up, be quiet, face the, yeah, Mm -hmm. so hard. Um, It'd be worth Googling, you know, just Google, you know, famous people who are born the year of the dragon. You know, I believe, I believe Steve Jobs was born the year of the dragon, you know, that those people think outside you know of of the norm of the mundane and that's what this energy hopefully next year will push us to start seeing things differently i mean COVID did that COVID forced us to start having to do things differently um which is awesome the great gift of COVID is you know seeing things for what they are and kind of seeing things a more a little bit more clearly maybe the dragon will stir some shit up and yeah people say they wish they could they wish they could go back they hated covid they wish they could go back to the way things were before then and it's like no you really don't we were in like a a stupor a coma a dull pain and we didn't even know it and yes COVID was painful and i wouldn't want to go through that again but um but it was a gift in in so many ways one question i've i've had though that i want i want to ask you is for people that do have dragons in their chart and i know many things go into it Mm -hmm. um but is it a more intensity is there is it different for is it awesome is it is it more challenging or is there no answer to that well the answer that i was taught is and i'm i'll add some other to that as well of what i've experienced over the years because i've been doing this since well i got my certification in 2005 and so i've done a lot of charts (laughs) a lot um when you when you hit a period of time like we're going to hit the dragon year and that dragon matches one of the animals in your chart it will bring out the best and or the worst of your animal in that pillar that it's in whether it's your emotional pillar your physical health pillar your mental pillar or your life path depending on the work you've done right oh i love that i love what you just said if you're asleep you know this dragon could come in and really shake things up for you. But if you've been doing the work, this dragon could elevate it. Either way, it's going to elevate you, but it's going to be on your terms if you're doing the work. Yes. I love that because I fully believe that it's like not, it's not a one size fits all. And everybody is at a different place in their journey. And if you are at a more aware Space, if you've done a lot of work, um, I think that more of the, I mean, don't you see that more of the, the pros versus the cons show up more? Yeah. And I think when we say do the work, that doesn't mean that you've, you know, been going to counseling for the past 25 years necessarily. It's like, to me, work happens when you start questioning you question yourself you question the world you question if you're not questioning and asking those questions about what is my purpose why am i here what the hell am i doing what is this all about if you're not asking those questions then you're just 
it's just hitting the default button. Oh, it's just another day. I have to get to work. I've got to get my kids to the game. It's just that kind of existence. And some people are meant to have that existence. So there's no judgment around that. We need those people. Like, where were we the other day? I can't remember where my husband and I, and this is his, his criticism. He's, he's heavy in criticism. You know, he said something about some people working someplace. And I said, I'm so glad they work there though, because I don't want that job, right? We need the people to show up and empty our, this is where it was savers. They were empty, you know, they weren't helping me empty my car. I was doing all the work for these kids. And he's like, well, that's what you get with savers. And I'm like, well, at least they were there and I'm grateful. I didn't have to stand out in the cold and do that. Yeah. Um, I can't remember where I was talking yeah. about. So, so what, if you could kind of sum, like for, for us to sum this up before we end here, mm -hmm. uh, what would you say are some of the main challenges and then some of the main benefits of the year of the dragon? I think the main challenge is going to be for people who have a dragon in their chart. Having two dragons in the house um, might make people feel offensive or defensive or agitated or aggressive. Watch your tone. And it's going to depend on what pillar and kind of how it shows up. But trust me, my, my husband's already got the double dragon. It's a tone thing. You may not notice it, but if your partner says, why are you freaking out? I just asked you a question. It's because of the dragon. If you have a dragon in your chart. It's okay. already happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's really unfortunate. Wait, wait. The other day I said something, my husband started like coming at me and he, and I was like, whoa. And he goes, well, didn't you hear yourself? And I was like, uh, no, I was just saying, <laughs> interesting. So check your tone and okay. don't take it personally. If somebody says, why are you being so aggressive or assertive? Okay. Just, just shift, right? Don't take, don't continue that energy. Like I said before, I think the dragon is bringing magic. I think he's bringing amazing gifts and it's, up to us on how, if we're gonna, you know, like I said, run run inside and lock the door. It's like, I don't wanna have anything to do with what the, I don't even believe in dragons. Why are we even talking about dragons? Screw dragons. Um, they're just in the movies. There's gonna be that kind of energy and there's others that are gonna be like, you know, take me with you. <laughs> you know, swoop me up. I wanna ride on your back. Show me these other realms. Even if you don't have a dragon in the, your chart, you can call your inner dragon, sit in a meditation, ask your dragon to present itself. What does he look like? How big is it? What color is it? What's its abilities? Become one with the dragon and talk to your dragon. What, how can we work together this year? What can you teach me? What do I need to understand this year? You maybe have a, a journal that's a dragon journal and you just write letters or notes back and forth between you and your dragon. You write on one side of the page, flip the page, and your dragon responds. It's automatic writing. So find ways to connect to that magic inside of you, your intuition, start trusting yourself, and be guided more intuitively rather than the mind and the ego. Love it, so good. That's all I got uh, until, until Chinese New Year event. <laughs> that's all I got. That's all she wrote, baby. Okay. So tell everyone about your Chinese New Year event and, uh, and we will definitely put information in the link below, but tell people, oh, good. you know, tell, tell us Thank about you. it. Thanks for doing that. Um, yeah, this is my 11th annual Chinese New Year event. I used to do it live here in, in the Salt Lake Valley. Um, but since COVID, um, I've been doing it live online and it's been so much fun because then all my students and clients from all over the world can chime in. You know, I've got people from Sweden and, you know, just everywhere coming in. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's a two day event. It's a Friday evening. We're going to do some reflection on the rabbit year. I have a guest speaker coming in to walk us through a meditation to release the energy of this past year. And then we'll reconvene Saturday morning, the 27th this month. 
and we'll dive right in. And what you'll get is ahead of time, you'll get a packet from me that's gonna be mailed in the, the, the mail, the real mail, and you're gonna get a toolkit for the year. And so lots of goodies. And then you're also gonna get a PDF file from me as well as your own Chinese astrology chart. So Saturday morning, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna go through all of that stuff. So you're gonna hear me talking even more deep, sharing more downloads that I've had from these dragons coming in and what their message is and how it's gonna influence your chart specifically. So you'll get to see your four animals and your elements. And then, um, then I take it to another advanced level. We talk about the flying stars of feng shui, um, where it's kind of mapping out your house. That's one of the tools that you're getting. And I have a support team that comes in and so they, they monitor the feed, they respond to any questions as, you know, during the whole process, but we have meditations, we have conversation. It's just, it's a celebration, it's a workshop, it's just a great opportunity to come together, talk some cool woo-woo stuff and get powered up to learn how to ride the dragon energy for next year. So exciting, so awesome. I have attended her event and I love it. It's so good. She puts so much time and effort into it and it, do. it is definitely well, well put together. So anyone that can do that, we will drop the link below and you can check it out and sign awesome. up for that. So thank you. It's January 26th and 27th if you mm -hmm. didn't catch those dates. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited for this year and I always get so many insights by listening to you and good reminders to be compassionate and not critical. Thank you for that. <laughs> I love <laughs> you. Thank such you. A gift to the world. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone.